Welcome back. This is TV3 New Day, and it's time now for The Big Issue. Good morning to you one more time, if you've been watching us uh, from the beginning of the show. If you just tuned in as well, good morning. I hope you had a good rest, and I hope you're ready for today's um, you know, issues and everything else that comes in between. But this is TV3 New Day, and we're streaming live on Facebook at TV3 Ghana. So please join us if you're unable to watch us on TV. Share the link as well so everyone can tune in. And the good thing is that while you watch us on Facebook, you can also drop your comments, your questions, or your opinion. But remember to add the hashtag TV3 New Day. You can also find us on X and Instagram at TV3 Ghana on DSTV channel 279. This morning we'll be assessing, you know, the Pharma D um, graduates who've been working, in fact, for about a year now and have not received their salaries or their income. In fact, this, the concern is that they did not even get financial clearance from the beginning when they were posted. And so that has been the bane um, of, of their whole national service, you call it, or so housemanship. And now they're saying this morning that they are going to organize a press conference on the back of the response that the vice president gave to a question that was posed to him just two days ago. We'll be speaking also about NAPCO and youth and afforestation initiatives who also have not received some amount of money that's owed them. And, well, the northern Ghana dry spell is also one of the issues we're going to tackle. And not just the northern Ghana. We're told that about eight regions have been affected by the dry spell. And as a result, yesterday... The Minister for Agri placed a ban, an outright ban on the export of grains. And he says it's between now and January 2025. And they're hoping that between now and then they'll be able to fix the issue because he calls this a situational crisis. And so he says this is not, um, you know, a national crisis. This is just a situational crisis because they have the means to address the issue. So we'll get into that as well. In the studios this morning, Frederick Kofi Ameyao, he's a member of the National Communications Team for the NPP. It's finally back. Good morning. Why did you add that to it? I had to add it. You're back, are you know? Just it's good to have you back. Missed me. That's all. Oh, I have <laughs> missed you, yes. That's why I'm saying you're finally back. So it's good to have you in the It's studio. good to be back, Bella. How are you doing? I'm awesome, by mm. God's grace. How okay, are you? Okay, I'm fine. So really, how are you really? surviving without us all, oh. all these weeks? We're able to breathe well. But, We're but, able to eat well. But for the fact that I miss you, I mean, <laughs> we are doing what we are supposed to do on other mm, platforms. Right? I, I mean, see. I mean, TV3 is TV3. It's a huge platform. And I, I believe whatever um, that triggered the reason for our not appearing on your show um, um, has been resolved. I believe so. Uh, I believe so as well because I love to be here. Okay. I love to be here. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we love to have you here as well. Honorable Clement. Abbas Apak is here, and I haven't seen him in a very long time, too. He did not boycott us, don't worry. But I think he was also very busy um, with constituency work. He's an MP for Bursa South constituency. Good morning. Good morning, Bella. How are you doing? I'm well. I was trying to remember the greeting that you taught me. Soluwa. Nah. But you, you say Solunalo. Solunalo. Eee. And when I say Kubasa, you say Kubasa. Kubasa. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. yes. I remember now. But yes. it's good to see you in the studio. Good to see you, too. How have you been? Where have you been as well? I've been busy. Dealing with constituency issues, party matters, parliamentary mm -hmm. matters, yeah. and now campaign issues. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a busy time for any active politician. Yeah. Uh, I miss you as well, though. I have missed but you we, a lot. But you know that this is my home. I know. I mean, I, my political career since I returned from my studies mm -hmm. abroad mm -hmm. cannot be written about without TV3. Yeah. I mean... I told you guys that uh, I'm called MPTV3 mm -hmm. in my constituency. Yeah. That was because of my frequency in appearing on your programs. So I, I'm hoping to reinstate that. But I'm inviting you to Bursa South. I, I look forward you should, to you should come there. and see the way the campaign is going. I look forward to coming there. And I also appreciate the challenges that mm. the people have to deal with. Right. Very serious, but you know we keep pushing ahead mm. with the hope that Things would improve. Definitely. And I'm guessing that it's also one of the areas that's been affected by the dry spell, the drought as Actually well. Actually not. We are the opposite. Okay. We are getting inundated uh, with, with water. Oh. A lot of my communities have actually been cut off as a result of the, the rain. Mm. So the, the road from Sandema to my own village, uh, Doringa, mm -hmm. is almost washed. Uh, a group of young men had to mobilize to get some stones and boulders to, to patch uh, parts of it. Uh, another road from Sandema to URC is, is terrible. Uh, and even from Doringa to Kanjaga to 
So the road network mm. has been severely affected by, by the rains. So, we, so we are actually on the opposite, opposite side. side. Exactly. And that is the, the dynamics of this climate change. You never really know what is going to happen yeah. where. Whereas we are getting inundated with, rain. with downpour. Mm -hmm. It looks like our neighbors uh, to the west, upper west, and parts of the, the northeast and northern region uh, are suffering from you know, a lack of rain. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is very worrying. Either way, it is still... The too much rain is creating havoc. Exactly. The lack of rain is, is creating havoc. And huh. that is why climate change is something we must take very seriously. Indeed, we, we should. And um, well, while I'm sure that government is dealing with that, they also have placed an outright ban on the exports of grains um, across these eight regions. And per statistics, the minister says that they, they come together to provide at least 62% of the grains that are produced in this country. And so if there's a dry spell, then that clearly affects the level of production, which is why he's placed a ban on the export, so that we can have enough to feed ourselves first before we think of the rest of the world. Do you agree with this? Because the Peasant Farmers Association, even though they agree with some of the other measures that have been put in place by government, they say that this ban was not the way to go. Let's listen to the Minister of Agri first of all, and then we'll hear from the Peasant Farmers Association. With immediate effect, government is placing a ban on the export of grains, including maize, rice, soya bean, until the situation normalizes. This measure is essential to ensure the availability of these critical crops on the domestic market. Without falling grain supply, government will tap into the ECOWAS grain reserve and partner with the private sector to bridge the gap. Government will also bring in 300,000 metric tons of maize and 150,000 metric tons of rice to provide food support to vulnerable farmers who have lost their crop and also for the market. You know, I, I don't think uh, that is the way to go. We need to do broader conversation on that. Otherwise, it may backfire. You mean the ban, the ban is not going the to ban, be no, much of a the help? Ban, the ban, I think it's too premature to announce a ban. I say this with clear evidence of what that happened to us last two years. The ban rather put farmers more into a risky position than what it intends to do. You see, let's take last year, 2010, we produced so much that we, as an association, approached the government and gave them a strategy to help us to mop all what we produce and farmers cannot get market and store them. So that during the late season or emergency season, it will release into the market. Mm. That may never batch. Farmers nearly actually um, committed suicide because they took loans, they have to settle their utility bills, they have to pay for their kids' school fees, and no market for their produce. Right. So we're also fortunate that the Burkina Bay and then the Tukulis came in to mop up. So if government is announcing a ban, what we expect to hear from government what are the measures in place to ensure that there is a guarantee market? To ensure that we have prices that commensurate with increase in cost of production. Mm. But if you just ban and then without putting in those measures, by the end of the day, you are making the farmers to suffer. And when the farmers are not able to get good market to commensurate the loans and the cost of production, the following year they won't go into production again. All right, so that's Dr. Alinyaba, and those are his concerns. I mean, if, if the previous ban, which took place about a year or two years ago, resulted in them not being able to sell off you know, their produce because it reduced the, the price of produce drastically and it, it caused a loss, then why is there a ban this time around? Kofi, Bella. valid point, is it not? Well, to some extent. Uh, Bella, good morning. Good, good morning. morning and, and just quickly, for those of you who are asking where movement for changes, Nana Yao Sapong, the political aide um, to Alan Chamati, is supposed to join us this morning as well. He's not here yet. We hope that he'll be able to join us shortly. Kofi, sorry, go on. Bella, um, for starters, I think we need to commend the Minister for uh, Food and Agriculture, uh, not just him, but also the Minister for Defence and the Minister for Finance for their proactiveness. Um, but for those who were really engaged and stakeholders, uh, we wouldn't have known that there's an imminent shortage of food coming mm -hmm. or we have a situational crisis as far as our food crops are concerned. 
and for him to yesterday avail himself and to also announce to Ghanaians that uh, if steps are not taken, we might get to a situation. Of course, when you look at uh, the in in inflationary um, figures, mm -hmm. you realize that food inflation is the highest amongst them. And in the recent spare of cost of living, uh, I don't think we are ready for any, any food crisis in this country. That would be a bit too harsh for us. So um, when I commend the three ministers, I mm -hmm. think it's in the right direction. Um, I think it's also important to note that um, government interventions have um, somehow helped. Mm -hmm. That is why um, the impact um, has not been felt heavily yet. And I hope that we, we never get there. I'm talking about the planting for food and jobs interventions um, that have been put in place in connection with this particular program, especially the phase two. As we speak now, we have well over 500,000 farmers who have signed on to the planting for food and job phase two okay. uh, with a target of one million. Registration is still ongoing. A digital platform has been created. You know, when it comes to the food value chain, you realize that government has three key components of things that it needs to do responsibilities. One, uh, agro input, two, land development and irrigation. When you look at the agro input, uh, from August 2023, um, um, I think 2.3 um, um, May seeds were made available to farmers. Um, rice, uh, about 2.6. Uh, when you talk about the vegetables, uh, specifically um, onions, tomatoes, and mm -hmm. pepper, we had about 10,000 uh, um, kilograms of them. So as far as inputs are concerned, the government is doing much as it can. When you look at irrigation projects, um, we are doing so much, so well. Uh, though much need to be done. Uh, we are talking about the Pone irrigation, mm -hmm. uh, the North Lake Pone uh, irrigation project. I saw that was started in 2011. Uh, I, I believe uh, as of last year was about 97% completed. Uh, this year will be completed. The One Village, One Dam is still ongoing. I'm not saying it's... we have done everything. Okay. We haven't done everything. Uh, there, there is more to be done mm -hmm. as far as irrigation projects are concerned because from what the figures are, you realize that 90% of our food consumption are the readily available ones. So I'm talking about not the ones that we've stopped. So when there's a season, we get the food available, about 90%, uh, which, is, which is unacceptable. At least we should get to a point where whenever, and I hope we never get there, there's a food shortage, we are able to rely on the ones that we have stored. I'm mm. talking about post-harvest programs and projects. As we speak now, when you go to Hefe in the coal, um, 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 uh, area. Uh, government has constructed about 6,000 tons of um, um, silos to store paddy rice and maize as well. There are a lot of work that are ongoing. When you, if you remember, the one million one constituency, mm -hmm. that went into the infrastructure for poverty eradication program. And that led to the establishment of the uh, development authorities. Uh, they also had, as part of their programs and projects, the one district one warehouse mm -hmm. that was to ensure that at the end of the day when after harvest uh, you know yams and all that can be stored there what i would say before i come to the main issue is that i thought you were already touching on the main issue no uh, no uh, the, the main issue is the intervention currently okay. enrolled by the government for i mean to mitigate the the, the situational crisis but i want to say that it's about time that we have huge and humongous private participation as far as post-harvest um, 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 uh, 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 situation in terms of our agro, <clears throat> agro processing is concerned. We cannot have government from, 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 from planting, from harvesting, from uh, 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 storing, and then also marketing as well. The, the private sector must participate heavily in the marketing component. Because when you, you now veering into the main issue, when you listen to uh, the, the gentleman who spoke, you realize that the concern now is the marketing, the availability of market for them to sell their product. Sometimes they can have bumper harvest, and at the end of the day, they've gone for loans, and they, they will mm -hmm. have, you know, these food items available, and nobody is buying them. Yeah. And sometimes they will go to waste. So they are calling on government to, as it were, you know, help them as far as selling of their produce are concerned. The challenge they do have is at the end of the day, and it makes sense. It's, mm -hmm. That's why I say to some extent, you can accept it because 
after everything that I've gone through, mm -hmm. and the money that I can realize, apart from selling to the local market, is also to export so that I can get some yeah. money for myself. Now, because of what we are going through, you are banning me. As it were, even the local market, I'm not able to sell my product. And if you look at the, the, the next situation, you realize that they get more money when they export rather than selling to the local market. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. So I think that they also need to understand the situation in which we find ourselves. And I, I am of the greatest opinion and conviction that it won't get to the point where they wouldn't be able to. That's why the, uh, the minister said it, it's just a temporary situation. And they are monitoring the, 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 the crisis uh, as and when uh, there is there's, there's a, a, a room for them to export again, okay. they will leave the ban. I have seen a situation sometime in 2017, I, I will in a minute, or in a second. 2017, where a, a ban was placed on maize. We had a maize shortage and yeah. all that. So, and that was lifted after some time. So I, I, am, I, I am sure that we will, we will solve this particular issue. Well, we hope so, because the Peasant Farmers Association, I'll come back to you, I just wanted to let you know, Peasant Farmers Association, you talked about um, even phase two of planting for food and jobs. They didn't even benefit from it. And so those were some of the concerns that they had raised, that none of their farmers had benefited from the phase two of planting for food and jobs in terms of the provision of all those interventions. And so that was a concern for mm -hmm. them. First of all, now the other concern is even the issue of irrigation, because at this point, if we're having to deal with drought, mm -hmm. where we don't even have the dams, you say that the one district, one dam it's still ongoing. is ongoing. Mm -hmm. So why is that for these northern areas, especially now that they're facing droughts, they don't even have access to these irrigation, look, you know, look, facilities. I admit that not everything has been done. Mm -hmm. Okay, There are challenges as far as irrigation projects are concerned. A lot are ongoing. And I mentioned some few to you okay. as well. Okay, and we must also admit that we are heavily dependent on the on, on rain. So we are gradually getting to a situation where we can depend, in the absence of the rain, we can depend on this. Uh, but Badri I am Dan sure. Was I, I am sure. No. So there was excess water, and I, I, I for am, a long time we've not been able to figure out how to store that water from the Bagri Dam. Every year it is spilled. It goes ahead to destroy farms, etc. It just goes to waste. Bella, I am positive, and I know for a fact that there are a lot of farmers who are benefiting from the irrigational project that have been made available, not just this government, but government across board. Okay. okay. But there's more that need to be done. Okay. okay. More need to be done. All right. Let me just say good morning to Nanaya Osapo on the political aid to Alan Chemantin. Those of you who have been asking for movement for change, they are here. They haven't stopped coming. They will continue to come. Good morning, Nanaya. I hope you're well. Good morning, Bella. Good to have you in the studios. But, but let me go to Doc. Um, I mean, you've heard from the Peasant Farmers Association mm -hmm. who clearly are not in favor of the ban. What do you think? Well, let me say good morning to you and to my co-panelists. And I say good morning to my constituents who are watching. Uh, first of all, I think it is good to put a few things into perspective. I have heard the peasant farmers, and I think they are right, on point. Mm. I say so because I am a native of that part of the country. So I know these things firsthand. Mm. This is not something that I have to read in a newspaper, an article. I live there. Mm -hmm. My relatives live there. It is my constituency. So I relate to it personally. Now, this ban is obviously a knee-jerk reaction. Why? Because if we were minded to have done the things that we promised the people that we're going to do. A change in the weather conditions, this dry spell, should not create the kind of panic that it has created. Because if not for panic, there wouldn't be a reason why government mm. would summarily announce a ban in the exportation of grains. What this tells the ordinary Ghanaian is that government is worried that if this is not done, it could lead to challenges to do with food supply. Mm -hmm. Government also claims that it has done well. And they speak about planting for food and jobs. Look, let's be honest. That program, that policy, is a failure by all standards. Why do you say that? Even before now, we knew that food inflation was the highest. Mm -hmm. 
They got to a point that when even the general inflation was about 50%, food inflation was hovering almost 60%. And I can guarantee you, though I've not seen the figures, whilst inflation is said to be hovering around 20 27 or so percent. No, it's 20.9%. 20.9%. Yes. I can guarantee you that food, food inflation will be higher. Now, what will be the success of a policy like planning for food and jobs when food inflation continues to be high? And if you listen to the peasant and farmers carefully, they have set time without number that the planning for food and jobs proposal has not benefited their members. Mm -hmm. And I know that to be true because we know of the fertilizers being smuggled across the borders and we're even told by the former Greek minister that donkeys were primed to carry the fertilizer across the borders on their own when indeed we saw trucks mm. that were cutting those fertilizers across the borders to Burkina Faso. We know today that we even import tomatoes mm. from our landlocked neighbors. Yes, we are crying about a spell. Burkina Faso is known to be a Sahelian country. So how is it that those of us who are closer to the equator will be importing tomatoes from a landlocked country? We import onions. Yeah. I mean, quite recently, there were reports that even plantain and contumbre were important. So you only get to know the output of a policy when that policy is solving the problem for which it was introduced. So when you say planning for food and jobs has been successful, and yet the practical needs of the people in terms of their food is not being met, you cannot convince me that this program has been successful. Now, the issue of storage is a reality. And the lack of ready market is a reality. Post-harvest losses is a reality. Look, in my constituency, where grains are farmed, rice, last year, I authored an article drawing attention to a glut as a result of the lack of storage and a lack of ready market for rice farmers in my constituency. Mm. Thousands of bags of rice went waste. Some were consumed by fires. Others just stood in the open and in the bags in which the, the paddy was, 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 was packaged, they, they, they got rotten, it got wasted. I mean, we lost colossal amounts of paddy rice. And farmers lost. They lost their revenue and they lost because they have to take loans to pay. And that usually affects their willingness to invest in the ensuing year. So what the, the, the peasant farmers are saying is the reality. Then you even wonder how we would say that we had a policy of one constituency or one district, one warehouse, and yet the farmers didn't have places to put their harvested rice. You wonder why we have a national buffer stock company, and yet when we produce in abundance, the buffer stock company, which initially was put in place by Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the founder of Ghana, to buy and store, particularly grains, in times of bumper harvest, so that when the lean season comes, these grains are what? Released to ameliorate the prices. Yeah. That is not happening. So we are not, we are not storing what we produce in excess. We are not providing a ready market for what we produce in excess. And that continues to generate the challenges that we have. So if we are going to be honest, we cannot say that the peasant and farmers are wrong. And when you say that you are placing a ban, what alternatives are you putting in place, as the peasant and farmers have asked? They have their grains to sell. You are not giving them a ready market. You may not be giving them a market that is commensurate to what they need to sell mm. so that they can recoup their investment. At the same time, you say you are placing a ban. Yeah, but government is saying that so for all those who will be affected, if they have extra produce, they can get in touch with them or the district offices so that they can send the produce to but them. But that shouldn't be the and case. So government is going to buy those but produce But you see, this is, a, this is an afterthought. That is the whole how, point how I'm making. How is it an afterthought? These, these programs 
and directives should have already been in place. If it was a system that was synergized, immediately after the harvest, the excess grain should have either been procured by government mm. or government should have made resources available to the Ghana Food Buffer Stock Company to procure them. Yeah. As we speak, we have our wards in secondary schools whose diet is a challenge. The quality of the food and the quantity of the food has become a source of concern. Mm -hmm. We have our wards in the basic school system, the school feeding program. And if you see the kinds of food that we are feeding them, it is pitiful. At the same time, the food is there. We are not making provision to procure it, to save it, process it, so that we can feed ourselves. So it's almost as though government likes to talk the talk. But when it comes to walking the walk, it doesn't happen until emergency situations like this emerge. Because it, it shouldn't be the case that government is now asking farmers who have excess grains because government has introduced a ban for the farmer to then go out to look for the officer and then approach the officer to say that I have excess grains, therefore come and buy. That shouldn't have been the case. This should have happened way before an indication of a crisis okay. uh, situation. So, so, so what about, all right. Then the issue of irrigation. Look, one blade, one dam. It was a big joke. The dams were not fit for purpose. In fact, the former minister for special initiatives mm. indicated that they were not fit for, for purpose. She said that with 250,000 Ghana cities, Ghanaians could not expect any meaningful dams to be constructed. And she was right. It was a waste of money. I don't know any of my communities in Bulsa South mm. where the dams, even in this rainy season, are fit for purpose, let alone in the dry season. So there were dams that were dug? They were, they were, they were dug out. At mm. best, they were, they were giant potholes, so to speak, because they couldn't even hold water. And you have heard some of the farmers in the communities that gave away their lands for these dams complain, regretting that if they had known that these dams were not going to, fit, to be fit for purpose, they would have kept their land mm -hmm. for their cultivation. And so when we speak about irrigation, we speak about substantial investments, like the Tamini Dam, which was constructed under John Domani Mama. So they go and see it. Even in the dry season, the young men and women are cultivating onions, they are cultivating carrots, they are making mm -hmm. good money. Mm -hmm. That is what we call irrigation dams. These are the dams that people think about when you tell them that you are going to provide dams, not this 1D1F. And I, I challenge TV3. There's no 1D1F. 1V1F. Uh, one, 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 <laughs> one village. One dam. One dam. So 1V1D, <laughs> yes. Yeah. The 1-1. One, one. Mm. So, so, so look, to bring this to a close, it is unfortunate that we are facing the drought situation. But this government has not done well in addressing the needs and challenges of farmers. If that were to be done, if the one village, one dam was fit for purpose, if irrigation was taken seriously, if the inputs, fertilizer and others were truly getting to the farmers, if the National Food Buffer Stock Company was situated to do its work, not this middleman role that it plays, mm. giving contracts to people in Accra to supply peanuts to schools in northern Ghana, when in fact it is in northern Ghana that peanuts or granites are farmed. I believe that we would have been able to stockpile sufficient grains. Okay. And this dry spell would not have caused the panic. And the farmers would not be complaining that they are being prevented from selling their grains to the highest bidder when government right. is not even giving them an avenue to sell their produce. All right. Now, so, so the minister says that this is not a national crisis. There's no need... Um, you know, for people to panic because this is just a situational crisis where they know exactly what the problem is. They're working to fix this problem, and so it's just a situational crisis. What do you say? Bella, good morning. Good morning. And, um, good morning to your viewers. <clears throat> um, I, if it's not a national crisis, why would we want to ban it? I mean, if it's gotten to an extent where there is a ministerial um, community to put a ban on the exportation. Mm. And when I was coming, I was actually monitoring the airwaves. One basic and fundamental question I even asked was that why should it even be the Minister for Agri? 
who should issue a ban? Who should have issued that ban? On the exportation uh -huh. of grains. Um, when farm products have left the farm, the farm gate and it has left, it now becomes a tradable commodity. Mm. So it should have been the trade minister. For, the, what for that matter, for that purpose. Because the Minister of Agri has no control over exports. Mm. It is the Minister for Trade and Industry who has control over that sector. Because the Minister for Agri cannot even tell the quantity of grains that are exported. He can only tell the quantity of grains that are produced. And so it is the Minister for Agri who advises the Minister for Trade and says, Minya, we have only five bags. And I think we have a member of parliament here, so he understands the procedures. Now, how much of grains do we consume? If he says we consume two, and then we export three, we can have one for security. Mm. And then he would say, okay, my farmers are saying that from now till December, we can only have four. Then the Minister for Trade would be advised to put a ban on the exportation of, of grains. Mm. And some time back, the Minister for Trade and Industry, at uh, the, the time when it was Alain Tremantin, there was a similar issue, but it, had, it, it didn't have to do with drought, though. Um, there was an LI that was issued, and I think that there was this regulations that came in. We had first a three-month ban, then yeah. it was extended to six months. And um, when it so happens, you would have the implementation modalities where you set up the committees, a joint committee between the Ministry of Agri and mm -hmm. Ministry of Trade and Industry, and then they are able to regulate. Of course, in every country, we would be happy to have more production and so that we would have more to consume domestically and then to also encourage the export to allow more inflows to support our, 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 our economy. Mm -hmm. But Bella, the agricultural policy environment in Ghana has been characterized by mere short-term interventions. And this is something that we ought to be able to look at. What is happening is that the interventions that these uh, policy uh, makers come up with are so much short that once we leave, as we are now, we are this, this intervention is as a result of the drought. Mm -hmm. Now, once we have left the season and the rains have come, then we forget that there will be tomorrow where we would have another drought. And so we should be looking at policy interventions that would actually extend beyond the happenings of today. And, you see, in order to address these challenges, there is a need for us to aggressively have policy interventions in sectors that are involved. Because it's not only the agri sector. This, this, there's a joint. You, you would have Minister of Agri, you would have Minister of Trade and Industry. Yeah. In fact, uh, Honorable brought in the, the buffer stock, you know, food security. In my view, even issues that has to do with food, should involve national security because yeah. it's security matters. Health, food, you know, these are all security matters. Is that not why he brought the defense minister as well in uh, that press briefing? Yes. Exactly. You understand. Mm -hmm. So these are, that's what I'm saying that if you come to tell me that it is, uh, we shouldn't panic and that nothing is happening, everything is fine. Mm. And, uh, you are doing the PR, it's good, but let's face the reality. You understand. What have we actually done? Not paperwork. When people were talking, the Ghanaians were talking about the failure, the policy failure of the one village, one dam, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't allow us, the Ghanaians, to talk about it, probably they did not think that today would come. If we had dealt even properly with that issue of dams in the northern sector where all the grains come from, we wouldn't be here today because we would have been able to harvest rains. We would have been able to actually 
taking advantage of modern technology to sustain water, to be able to continue the farming. Mm. I mean, in other jurisdictions where they are, they are, they are, they are desert areas, like the Burkina Faso and the rest, if they are able to have an all-season, all-year-long farming activity, why can't we have an all-year-long farming activity? Well, uh, enhancing agricultural production and productivity is one angle. Mm -hmm. Improving on agricultural marketing and distribution is also another angle. You cannot do them apart. What is here? We would have to take into consideration the growing nature of the population in Ghana, the consumptions we are going into, mm -hmm. the numbers, and then try to improve even the plantations we have. And if you take the, uh, the Great Transformational Plan by uh, Alan John Kujit Tramantin, you will notice that there is an aspect that has to that deal specifically with the production and productivity, where he proposes the establishment of agro parks. Now, if you, if you ask the agri people what agro parks are, they are very much different from plantations because it goes beyond just having the, the farm okay. into having even the processing plants on the farm where it would be able to reduce the post harvest losses. I think in the recent um, publication, I think Ghana, the post harvest losses in Ghana is one point something billion dollars. Post harvest losses alone. If we are able to improve on our post harvest losses, but I think that we would have no cause to complain today. And Bella, we should be able to drive our priorities right. Are we not doing that? Is that not why the minister has asked for this ban and also See, looking to invest some $500 million to support the farmers? In every jurisdiction, when you take the agri policies, you will notice that they focus greatly on grains. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. to, beef, to beef up their food security. You understand? To beef up their food security. Now, we had what we call the planting for food and jobs. Yeah. What was the focus of the planting for food and jobs? What, what, what were the priority food products? What was in the food basket? What did we look at? Now, were we able to actually encourage many people to even own their, their farms? At an, to, a, to an extent, I, I remember one time the minister for the then minister for agri had to actually bring um, um, plantain? plantain to the ministries to sell. He said he wanted to prove a point that did we have to get to that extent? Excess. Did we have to get to that extent? You and I know that nobody, no plantain farmer, would keep plantain in his in his in his farm. I bet Danny Koko ever say. So if indeed they did have, they will bring it to the open market mm. and sell. It is how we drive the policies. Planting for food and job was a very beautiful agricultural policy, policy idea, but its implementation was a failure, in my view. It was a failure. It was a failure. He said, he's I, been I, saying I, that totally they've been good. And I'll, I'll let you come in. I'll let you come in shortly. Hold on, hold on, Anayel. Uh, sorry, hold on, Kofi. Now, now, please land on this for me, because he's been saying earlier that they may not have been able to achieve everything, but at least they tried. No, no, no nobody's said. disputing that. And I have I, I said it. Maybe he wasn't listening. I said it's a beautiful policy. Of course. I mean, we were excited about it because, you see, you would need these same agri products to feed into the industries. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of, 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 of rice um, um, factories that was was built, I think, about three or five of them. Um, I'll, I'll get the details for you. You mean one, this, uh, one uh, district, one factory? Yes, we had a lot of them that did not have the rice raw materials feeding into it. And they are there. Mm. The, the mills are just there. They are not working. 
So everybody who is into industry would be excited for the success of agricultural policies. Okay. That Lanthony. would bring us the raw materials to feed into the industry. Okay. Bella. Doc, I'll come to you shortly. Sure, sure. I'll just let us go around. Well, he represents government, so yes, let him be more, more of the talk. No. I have a challenge when majority of the time, um, I mean, our friends on the other side will just poo poo government policy is a failure, it's a failure, without speaking to the facts. What is the fact? The fact is that, look, as we speak now, when you talk about maize, sorghum, soya, paddy rice, cassava, yam, plantain, mm -hmm. we have in abundance, as far as the targets were concerned, we've exceeded all those targets. I'm talking about planting for food and jobs interventions. We've exceeded the target for production, for yam, for cassava, for all these um, 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 crops. Do, so do so why is food inflation well, high then? I'm, I'm, I'm making a point. Okay. okay. Then two, when you look at the, the fact, one village, one dam, if you go to the Upper West region, the people in Asi, mm -hmm. Gogri, then you go to Savannah, Chinlo people, the Northeast people, Tom people, who are enjoying the One Village, One Dam. Mm -hmm. uh, the point has been made many times that it's not everything. In any case, inherent in the fact that we haven't been able to achieve everything is when the vice president and the leader and flag bearer of our party said that we've done about 83% of the things that we promised the good people of this country. Including so, the One Village, One Dam. So there are, there are things that we haven't been able to do. Do you have any details on how many dams are working at the moment? And are oh, I have it. Feeding in fact, I have it here on the, on, the, on the performance tracker. Okay. Uh, everything is right here. Uh, uh, we have the Upper West. Is it Danchala? We have Savannah, Tulewe. Uh, about these all dams these... are serving their purposes. Yes, they so, are all completed. So then, said... why is there drought? No. I mean, I understand that the rains are not coming, but if that's the case, then these dams should have come in. But I have to also made the farmers. point. I have also made the point that we haven't been a perfect government, but, you but we have been a working. better. Yes, of course they are. Working. It so then, the farmers that... shouldn't be struggling. No, Bella, you are not or... getting the point. Yes, some farmers are benefiting; others are not. And the 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 point. That dog made that is a knee-jerk reaction. I, I beg to differ. It, 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 it's an, it's an in, a situational crisis that we find ourselves. And everybody, everything must be on board to ensure that at the end of the day, we get out of it, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. okay? And that includes, temporarily, we ban it. Okay? Then we are not saying it's a, it's, it's a perpetual ban. No. It's a temporary situation that you know, we find ourselves. So for me, clearly, when you look at the planting for food and jobs, it has achieved a lot of successes. Because as we speak now, when you look at the interventions that have been provided for under this particular program, mm. either today were, farmers were not enjoying that. The planting for food and jobs, the planting for uh, uh, food and jobs, rural, um, um, you know, and all these uh, projects and these policies. You say it's achieved a lot of success. A lot of success. Why are we then buying one piece of tomato for five cities? Then it because comes to the issue. Because planting for food and jobs, we should have had it in abundance such that we don't have to pay such Basic high economics amounts. will tell you when it comes to demand. You, you can control demand. For example, somebody will prefer tomatoes from Burkina than tomatoes produced in Ghana. No, but if... Wait, wait, wait. So, sorry, mm -hmm. sorry, Kofi. But uh, hold on. <laughs> if we're producing in excess, there will not be a need for us to import. And I've never mentioned here that we are producing in excess. I haven't done that. No, but you're saying it's been successful. As successful means that we have enough to feed the nation so that then we don't import. Is that not it? There's no country in any part of the world that would not depend on exports. Even you food. mean imports? Or export? Import of food. There's no country, even the United States of America, no country in the world that will tell you, okay, we are so, so food so self-sufficient that we don't need any food from anywhere. That can be practically possible. But was that not a focus of this no, party no, no. in the, particular? When we say To self, ensure that we are able to we, feed ourselves. No, when we talk we don't of self-sufficiency, what it means is that in the absence of importing food, at least for a period of time, we can be able to take care of ourselves. Mm. That is the overarching the, 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 goal. But it cannot be the case, hold on, Nanaya. It can never be the case that in the life of a country, they will never depend on importation of food into their country. That will never happen. Kofi, it's not practical. Let's, let's be real. But point, wait. Nanaya, please hold let's, on. Kofi, let's, 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 let's be honest with ourselves. True. Mm. The whole idea of planting for food and jobs was for what? 
for us to have food so, and abundance uh -huh. so mm. we can feed ourselves. True. So if we had been able to do that, then there would not be a need to import but some of that. Also the Why are we not importing to onions, Wait. tomatoes, all these things, when we should be able to produce them here the, to feed the, ourselves? But I'm, I, I made a point to you when it comes to demand for products. Uh -huh. Okay? Bella, you, 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 you go out there, and when you go for events, you see the fruit juices that are served mm -hmm. are locally made. Right? Mm -hmm. A lot of them. You know, the pineapple juices, the orange juices, they are locally made and they are made available for anybody that comes. But yet we import fruit juices in this country. Because we're not produ producing enough. For and us if to be we able want to, to produce in, and take you, care of ourselves. Look, you go to a place, somebody will tell you, I don't like the local one. I want the foreign one. As a business person, you must fulfill that demand. So the point I'm trying to establish is that, in as much as we have made a lot of, you chucked a lot of successes as far as the planting and food uh, and jobs are concerned. There are a lot that needs to be done. And as a country, not just Ghana, any country can never mm -hmm. say they won't depend on the importation of other but, food. But what did Nigeria that, do? That is the, they cut mm -hmm. down on the importation of rice to a as large extent now, and yeah. ensure that yeah. they are yeah. As we speak now, because of planting for food for and jobs, as we speak rice. now. And now it's working for them. And it's working in Ghana as well because of planting for food and jobs. What is working Let's in Ghana be. exactly? Sorry, Nanaya, yeah. please. I'll let Doc come. Yes. Yes. Let him just respond to this, please. Come. Doc will come. The rice time. production. He's taking all the time. I'm, I'm all going to give you equal time, I promise. Ask Doc Luna to come from Ghana. Okay, no, no, but look, Bella. Please respond to this. You're not being honest with us. We have to be What do you mean I'm not being honest with you? Look, Bella, I'm talking about rice production in Ghana. There has been a dramatic increase in local production of rice. That has caused a reduction of our importation of rice. Do you it's have a fact. statistics? Of course, we are now doing about stats? almost 50% uh, of. Um, I, I will have it available to you, and I will definitely get it for you before we leave this okay. studio. But I'm telling you, there have been a lot of successes. So if anybody sits there and poops and you know run down planting for food and jobs, it, it's unfortunate, extremely unfortunate. Okay. I am saying, and I will make continue to make the point. We haven't been a perfect government as far as solving all our challenges, but we have been a better government relative I to see. what we inherited. Okay, let, let me just go to Doc. Um, as I'm speaking, my chiefs are watching, mm. uh, two of them. Nab, Atirikwe, Amalusi, Ignatius, the third, mm -hmm. and Nab, Akambia, Nab, Akambong. He's my senior brother and my own chief. They are all farmers. And they agree perfectly with the Peasant Farmers Association about what is going on. Mm. Look, we need to take another look at the agri sector in this country. And from where I sit, one of the best proposals is what we proposed in 2020, and we are proposing again, the farmer service centers. Mm -hmm. you, you must have a deliberate policy where you establish farmer service centers in farming communities. So the farmer service center will have all the inputs that the farmers need, as well as the storage, so that when the farmers are going to begin the cultivation, they come there, they can get the tractors, mm -hmm. they can get the fertilizer, they can get the seed, and then the tractor will go and plow harrow, and do all of that for them. You give them the inputs, even if they don't have the money. Then when they harvest, they can decide to sell the produce yeah. and come and pay back. Or the farmer service center, the staff there, will be mandated to buy the produce from the farmers mm -hmm. and then store them in the, in the warehouses. That is what you do. You synergize it and you localize it. The current arrangement, well, I'm not saying it. Take it from the Pizan Farmers Association. They are saying that it is not working. Yes, we can talk about figures, we can talk about numbers, but is that reflected in the reality? And listen to the name of the, of the policy. Mm. Planting for food and jobs. Yeah. Yet we are hungry. We are not getting sufficient food. Cost of food is expensive. At the same time, the agro business sector is not generating sufficient jobs. So how do you tell me that the policy has been successful when it has not even achieved what its name indicates that it ought to achieve? Mm. Are we planning for food? If we are planning for food, yes, why is one tube of yam costing 50 Ghana cities? Why is one bowl of tomato costing five Ghana cities? Clearly there is something I miss. Mm -hmm. So the truth is that 
government ought to admit that these policies have not worked. I, I even thought that the policy would have been scrapped. When I heard that they were reloading it for phase two, I was surprised. Because okay. phase one was a colossal failure. Why would you repeat something that didn't succeed? And you see, that speaks to this government's aversion to review. They don't like reviewing anything they, they implement. If they had properly reviewed phase one of the planning for food and jobs, I believe that they would have learned some lessons from what worked and what didn't work. Mm. And they, they would have customized or tailored it in a way that would be more beneficial. But simply just throwing money at the policy and then getting figures from your field representatives is not reflective of the reality on the ground. And that is why my chiefs have said I should tell you that they support what the peace and farmers are saying because they are farmers. They mm. know what is going on. Now, now, let me just put some stats out so that people understand. If, if Kofi is saying that, for example, planting for food and jobs has been successful. Now, if you look at 2018, how much we were spending on the importation of tomatoes, it was around 99.5 million US dollars. This was in 2018. As at 2022, we had jumped from that 99 million dollars to 400 million dollars. This was about two years or three years after the launch of Planting for Food and Jobs. And so if Kofi is telling us that it's been successful, how are we jumping to $400 million of just importing tomato from Burkina Faso? Can, can I first? I'll let you come in. I just want Anaya to come in. But I just wanted to put this out there so that we are aware. And then for viewers who are watching as well, you can probably understand and share no, your opinion on this. Hold on. Rice, Hold on. I'm, I'm doing it gradually. They are doing it as well. Mm -hmm. And so we've jumped from 99.5 million US dollars in 2018 to 400 million dollars in terms of importation of tomatoes alone. And yet, Kofi says that planting for food and jobs and has I, I want been to successful. To that. I'll because let you respond. Hold on. Kofi, can I, can I'll let you respond, I, Kofi. Don't I, worry. Let Nanaya touch on this. It's, it's rather unfortunate, but I can speak on authority. I'm, I've requested for the figures that rice importation has not reduced in any way it hasn't i have asked them to give me the figures and i'll put it out see let's let's face the reality we sit here i agree we have the numbers just as honorable is saying the numbers will be given to us they would go and sit in the offices and give us uh, uh, tables and all that and dra graphs and all that mm -hmm. but the reality is when you go out there Bella, the main objective of planting for food and jobs, when it was actually launched in April 20, uh, 2017, was to support food security. One. Two, the immediate marketability of chosen food crops and the creation of jobs. Mm. Is the government telling us that we have become so sophisticated that we are not able to consume the tomatoes that we produce, that we have to import. If planting for food or jobs was so successful, we have produced tomato soup. Nobody is saying we, we don't, no country imports. Let's stop using the US and, and other jurisdictions as, as examples. Mm. They have proper food security. Bella, in, 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 in your practice as a broadcast journalist, have you heard that Ghana has become so sophisticated that we are able to actually keep our tomatoes and use it so for a year long that we mm. do not import? I mean, let's be real. <laughs> you understand. Now, the Ministry of Trade, seeing the need for us to tour the way um, told the line Nigeria actually mm -hmm. went that put ban on rice. We were told even by 2023 that we're going to ban because the importation the, of rice. the, the infrastructures have been produced, mm. the infrastructures have been established. Mm. You understand? If we had actually gone by the plan by that that was proposed by by Alan and and his team at the time when he was at trade, we would not be here today. Mm. Bella. It was there for seven years. We, we, 
For seven years, we established factories that were supposed to have been fed by raw materials from enough. the by the agri minister. Seven years is long time yeah. enough. No, no, no. So, so just so, you haven't gotten the the details for the rice. No, I'm going to get it for you. I, 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 I have just it. Checking. I you also it. have it. Yeah. I'm also checking here, and per the Ministry of that, Food and Agri statistics, they're saying that rice imports to Ghana fell by about 45 percent. 45.34% between exactly. 2021 and 2020. I've asked them for the figures. Okay, so but let's, you don't let's believe wait. Hold on. Now you don't you don't you hold on. Let's wait Bella. and get what let's, figures let's, is also let's. asked for. And then and does he have it? Okay. Technically, you said 50%. <laughs> we, were here, 50 we were here when, when, when Katie Hammond <laughs> went to <laughs> Parliament, all right, trying to deal with the issue of import substitution. What happened? The Bruhaha that came about. There was a whole document we left behind that has to deal with import substitution, rice, sugar, and all of the, the major um, commodities and foods that we import with an implementation plan. And that is what we are talking about. Okay. If, if there are plans and policies towards dealing with the food security, but like, we will not be here today. We are talking about grains. <clears throat> if we are not able to deal with grains, how do we deal with the issues of even tomatoes? And that was a question you posed. Mm -hmm. If we have tomato, we have produced tomatoes so much that we 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 should we, we will not be um, um, having importations again on tomatoes. Why would we go to the market to buy a, a fruit of tomatoes for mm. five cities? Mm. If food is in abundance, prices drop. If you tell me food is in abundance and yet prices are galloping. It is as though you have some special warehouses that you are actually keeping the food by, by, by government. Yet, even buffer stock is suffering. And so where are they getting their figures? And of course, if the fundamentals are weak, the market space will expose you. You are talking about having bumper harvest because of planting for food and jobs. Planting for food and jobs was actually for food security. <laughs> And so you don't sit and tell us that indeed it has been a success when we are just three months or four months of drought in the north, we are already crying over grains. And you tell me planting for food and jobs was a success. <laughs> okay. And we have dug dams in villages and yet there is drought. Then where, where are we harvesting the rains? What technology have we introduced? Because in, there are other jurisdictions, in Israel and other places. I mean, you are certain examples like in the United States. There are other jurisdictions where they don't see rain, mm. but yet they have food in abundance. Hmm. Okay. I'll what is you... the policy direction? That is what we are asking for. I'll, I'll because this is just a short-term mm. mechanism. What is the policy direction? I'd like if you respond to this. Just 30 seconds so we can quickly move on to our next topic. So I was asking you about even the importation of tomatoes and how that had increased from about 99.5 million U.S. dollars to 400 million U.S. dollars in the space of about three, four years. In, in my initial commentary, I, I made allusion to a fact, and I think that we shouldn't lose sight over that. And that has been the reason why, for me, uh, overarchingly, we are somehow, you know, having this back and forth debate. Government cannot do it all, from, from planting to harvesting mm. to harvesting to marketing government can do it all because the responsibility of government is so much so there is a need for some sort of private participation or involvement especially uh, post harvest if we, we don't do that and we continue to blame government and uh, government did this it's a failure we, we won't make any progress the progress is that much the same way as businesses are investing in real estate building and all sort of skyscrapers and all high-rise buildings there must be some huge involvement of the private sector into our, 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 our agri business. Otherwise, we won't make progress. I wouldn't want to debate much further because at the end of the day, the figures are there for anybody to see. You can continue to dispute the figures. You sit here and talk about the fact that rice importation hasn't reduced and you have a figure. You don't have it. The real figure is the fact that it's about 45%. That's the truth. We are making progress as a country and we need the support of everybody. I'm not sitting here saying that Planting for food and jobs and rearing for food and jobs has been a success that Ghana is so self-food sufficient that we don't need to import food. That's not the point that I'm making. I am making that some progress has been made and we need the intervention, the participation of every Ghanaian, especially the businesses in the okay. agri-business, 
So that at the end of the day, we wouldn't be in a situation where once upon a time you won't get okay. uh, uh, food or uh, we won't get anything to buy when you go. Land on this, market. please. So uh, Nasi Mohammed says in my uh, village that dugout um, has been covered by sand because it was just a shallow mess. You didn't tell us which village, so we can also um, go and uh, follow up on I this. I have forwarded but, to your WhatsApp okay. the summary data for 2021-2022. You have a less number. How did you get Bella? The, Bella, you gave you no. But what's wrong with the answer? What's wrong? What's wrong? It's you give you no. Stop being serious. Let's focus. 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 Let's Okay, I've sent it to you. I'm just trying to look at that. So, right? No, it's okay. So, I'm sending it to you. Okay, what else do you have to do here? Some of your products, since you're doing a data from. No, a summary data from where? What from, you from, from, from the export. Yes, ministry. Okay, yes. All right, so it says that rice, as of 2021, it was valued at 164 million US dollars. In 2022, he had moved up to 264.598 million US dollars. Bella. So, so, I want to ask you. conclude on this issue. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's unfortunate that we are experiencing this dry spell. Mm. But we ought to have anticipated. And I think if we were to get it right, a dry spell of just about three months, mm. should not be creating the panic. Mm. Look, this is a panic reaction. No. If it is it not is. a panic, it's the a... directive will not be given the way it has been given. Mm. A panic. It is a panic. It has happened it before. It is a panic reaction. So what I'm going to say is that we must also be mindful of our own role. You know, I've always been an advocate against the destruction of the Savannah Ecological mm -hmm. Zone. Mm -hmm. You know, my fight against the harvesting and, and exportation of rosewood. All of these things are contributing to the change in the climatic conditions. Yeah. So as, as we are talking about this, we must also then look at the bigger picture of what is still going on up north and also what is even going on in the forest zone as mm. a result of this illegal mining, how our forest cover is being decimated. All of these things, okay. they have consequences but I have a question right. for now and the future. It's important. Hold on, we, we need to move what? on. If you support climate change, why would you put in your manifesto the removal of emission tax? That's a different topic altogether. But, but Shadrach, I don't know if you can project, that is not the only project this quickly um, so we can... No, I'm saying because, that. Why would you again, because, because we don't believe it's, it's, hold on. it's not hold justified. On. Hold on. It's so, so Kofi, not. If you support climate change, why would you support it's not. Let me read the reasons. Okay, not. Kofi. So per what the Greek ministry had put out, that mm -hmm. rice importation had, had fallen by 45.34%. Now, it says that this reduction, according to various stakeholders in the industry, could be attributed to increases in import taxes and the reversal <laughs> of the benchmark value discount policy on some selected oh, some imported, imported products. products. No, products. No, Import substitution. Right deal with the specifics. Into the country. From, from, from import substitution. So, so I was talking about. The years have no. lamented no. about the lack of bias for harvested rice in no. warehouses no. across no. the country. No. Exactly. And this is what I'm talking about. You also mentioned so you know, Wait, wait, relax. No, I, I mentioned tomatoes. That was different. Which has seen an increase. Yes. Why are they not attributing to taxes? So hold on. But wait, the figures are important. From 2011 to 2023, uh -huh. it increased from 4,000, 463,000 metric tons to 1.9 million Which metric tons. Which one are you talking about? Rice. Rice. So it's not so, just about the taxation, the tax regime, but also the production, local production. But are that they buying caused, locally as well? Because course. the farmers are now saying that they don't even have bias for the harvested rice. Oh, that's not true. I'm just it's true. reading. It's not true. That is oh, true. But this is the same no, document no, I'm reading. When you're you making the that, argument, I just told you that two cents. Wait, Kofi, when you're making the argument, you are the same document It's the same document she's reading. She hasn't changed. So it's okay if it's 45% reduction, but if the farmers are One of my chiefs who is watching, the chief of Bedemblisi, he still has rice. He is one of those who could not find a buyer. Yes. I know some of my colleagues, like the honorable it's member for Tugongo Center, marketing. Samson Chiragia, tons of rice. Alaji Tanku. I can give names oh, no, and names. I marketing. know this firsthand. It's they didn't get Vina. Vina. buyers. Vina. It's marketing on whose part? Because if we have the so buffer stock, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But what's the buffer stock for? They are supposed to buy. Government is supposed Government to buy supposed from the farmers. So if the farmers are not able to sell their food security, exactly. to for the purposes of food security, I made a point that if buffer stock not, had indeed bought always, these grains, we should not when always they were in, rely on government to do everything. 
No. It's not practicable. That's why we have, have you created the enabling way. environment of course we have. to encourage oh, right. investors, of course we have. the yeah. private yeah. sector. I really wanted us to move on to the next one. I'm in the education sector. I'm in the education sector. Just think about this. According to the government's own figures, we have 1.35 million students mm -hmm. in our secondary system. Imagine what that can do in terms of marketing. If we just simply created a nexus between the buffer stock, the rice farmers, and, and the, the schools. schools, we would have no reason to complain about rice being produced without bias. Mm. And we would have no reason to complain about our water in school eating inferior quality rice. That alone, secondary. Mm. We've not even gone to the basic. Where from KG to about uh, JHS, mm. we have close to 8 million and the school feeding program. See, so, so you, you see, you, you, the, you market, the market is there, but the processes to create the avenues to bring the consumers and the sellers together, which I think is the role of government, <laughs> is what is lacking. And that is what we are proposing to do. Mm. And now, man, first, the proper government. Just, just 30 seconds. Just, no, just 30 seconds. Oh, for to, for, 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 for those of you who say one ball of tomatoes is fine. Oh, but it is true. It's a propaganda. She goes to the market. She goes to the market. My wife goes to the market. I know that. Are you saying you don't know that? One ball of tomatoes. Open the line. No. Nyala, he is only trying to waste our time. Let me let me give you this. Right. Look, when I was talking about that, when I was talking about policy and directions, and then you when I was talking about food. policy food. directions, now we all agree on this table that climate change is an issue. But you see, one thing we are missing is that the NPP manifesto has not made any proposal in dealing with climate change. The press conference mm -hmm. by the Agri Minister yesterday should have been an opportunity mm. for him to deal with the matter. NDC is only talking about marketing. When you do not have the products, how do you market? Mm. And this is what Alan Chamantin is proposing. He says that to promote climate smart technologies to mitigate climate change okay. is to, is effects on agricultural productions. And then we are proposing the partnership between companies that are actually into real um, climate technologies. Uh -huh. And we have made proposals. Now, if you go to other jurisdictions... I'll let you hold on. So we have a call on the line. So we want to verify if really tomato... Okay, sorry about that. Sorry. Carry on. Um, are you projecting the figures? Yes, we will project it shortly. Yes. I want us to and quickly so, move on to our yes. next topic. So what we are well. saying is that, you see, the, the technologies are common now. If you go to Germany and other places, and they are ready to transfer technology. Mm. And this is what we need to actually deal with. What is happening to Palugu? That's another topic that requires another five hours. To you understand? Yeah. And then Kofi, who is in government, sits here and tells us that we do not understand what is happening in the market. Hmm. Anyway, so, so the, you, you got this data from the trade ministry? What was the source? Where, where did you get this trade data ministry. From? Trade but ministry. It's dangerous for you to do that, Bella. So, you don't know what's what, 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 Which is why I'm asking him. Trade hold ministry. Hold on, Kofi. Where? Where? You got it. Trade so these are, where? okay, 2022 provisional. Yes. Okay. Do we have any updated one for 2023 at least? I've, I've requested for the updated one. Okay. okay. So but, that we I can mean, look it, at it. For the purposes in the of discussion. Of that, is, for what? What is the source? I mean, it's an Excel thing you could, uh, you could do. Okay. Please, well, let's put it away. We'll wait and get the 2023. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Excel. Right. Now, the other issue that we'll be discussing is also a response that the Vice President gave during his Meet the Press engagement on Sunday evening. And it was about the Farm D graduates who have not been paid for working for one year. In fact, they've been doing their housemanship for one year. They have not been paid. The vice president was asked about it. He said he'll follow up on this matter as well. But let me just speak um, to one of the key people who's been campaigning for him and his team members to also get paid. I'll just get his name. So it's Jeremy, Dr. Jeremy Owusu Frifa. He's the leader of the Farm D class of 2022. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. How are you doing? Jeremy, are you there? How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. Now, I want to first of all find out what your president's response when he was asked about why you have not been paid. Ted, that conversation with what he intended to do about the arrears that you're owed. What did you make of his response? 
Tend to do going forward because I know that there's a press conference that you're organizing today. What exactly is it for? All right, so the press conference basically is um, about getting our issues out there. I think we are meeting with the various media houses. Okay. So we get our issues out there. The reasons why we are filing that lawsuit. It, but you know, one thing is that you would think after the whole issue was brought up on Sunday, somebody from um, I mean, a government official would have used that word, but then so now we've not really had any interaction with anyone. So mm. the press conference really seeks to put this uh, message out to the public so that they know that like I'm going to So you were expecting a phone call or some form of engagement. Would that have prevented um, that lawsuit that you intend to file? Uh, well, it depends on the conversation that um, or the outcome of that uh, particular engagement. And... The outcome that we are seeking is just one, that our money is to pay to us. Mm. So if that's the outcome, then the lawsuit would, can be put on hold. But then if not, it goes on and on a big case. Okay, so there are 320 of you who have not been paid for a year, right? Exactly. How much is one, percent, uh, one person supposed to receive, if I may ask? Uh, roughly about um, 3,500 to 4,500. Is it per month? Yeah, per month. Per month. 3,000 to 4,000 yeah. CDs per month. Yes, and so sir. that's times 12 months times 320 of you. Exactly. Wow. That's, that's what? 11.5 million? Yes. Hmm. Exactly. So, so, well, okay. It's an allowance. So, so, so it's an allowance, right? Yes. The house money. Yes. Okay. So what happens? What timelines are you giving governments with regards to what you're going to do next if you don't receive your money? Well, so I think we sent uh, it's the team to the Attorney General. Um, that was somewhere last week. And mm. as I'm speaking with you now, it's left at about 23, 14, so that we get a second response from the Attorney General. Okay. If that does not, or any no conversations are had, as I said earlier, the law goes on on a basis. All right. Well, thank you so much. And we'll be monitoring your press conference to get some further details on that. We do hope right, that you. your monies will be released. But, Kofi, it's not just them. NAPCO is also another angle altogether. They are also old. For those who are old, about nine months, if you put their monies together, it's about 451 million Ghana cities or, or in excess. There are those who are also old um, 16 months. You listen to the vice president, and he says that we'll follow up. But especially for NAPCO, the vice president had spoken at the beginning of June mm -hmm. where he was asked by some chiefs when he visited the Volta region. And it was the same response he gave, that he's in touch with the finance ministry. He'll follow up and ensure that they get paid. Then this time around, he says the same thing, but says we're going to try and convince or persuade the Ministry of Finance to pay. What does that mean, persuade? And why has he not been able to get them to pay their monies after they worked for government? I have a personal, you know, principle that... Once you work, you must be paid. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, I think it's a principle in the Bible. Every worker deserves his or her wages. So it doesn't matter whether they are financial constraint or otherwise. You must be paid. And it doesn't matter which political party is in power. Once somebody has performed a job, that person must be given his or her wages or allowance or salary or as it were. So that's my personal principle when it comes to some of these things. But... I, I thought it was a salary issue because I read somewhere that they, they are waiting for financial clearance. So I yes. was a bit confused because I know with the Public Financial Management Act, mm -hmm. you can never be employed without a financial clearance. Okay, so Some of their colleagues actually got their clearance and went ahead. Okay. And okay. then they eventually were also posted. But when they were doing their the allowance, the allowances that were supposed to be given to them. It wasn't given because there was no financial so clearance. Now I have case. the clarity now mm -hmm. that it's an allowance, just like maybe nurses mm -hmm. and allowances mm -hmm. in the NAPQA. Because that's their national the, service. The, the, they're supposed to do that. They're mandated. Difference between what the nurses are taking as students. I'm not talking about allowances. I'm talking about 
And so that's some expensive it. that it's like national service. I so get just it like now. how people who complete I get it now. tertiary do their national well, service. When, when, I was, when I was reading, I, I saw somewhere about employment and all that. So I wanted to be clear. Now I'm clear. And, and I've said, regardless of whether allowance or salary, once somebody has worked, you must pay the person. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. But you see, all these allowances that are unpaid, again, I come back to my personal principle. It's not the right thing to do. It's not fair to whoever is involved. The youth in afforestation, mm -hmm. uh, I think just about earlier this year, the, the CEO for um, um, Forest, Forestry, Forestry Commission, Commission, he said he was said, going to ensure that they'll get paid. And then four months out of about 17 months, okay, that is not for me fair. But we must understand that, and you realize that these things were post-2022 or 2021, mm. okay? Some of these challenges were post-2021. And as the vice president uh, accepted uh, last Sunday that we've had serious economic challenges in this country that affected our revenue, mm. okay? So uh, it's extremely unfortunate to the extent that the uh, domestic debt exchange program for which the finance minister had to apologize for, they are excruciatingly painful. Mm. For anybody to want lose their money, for anybody to work without getting their, their allowance or their salaries. But I am extremely convinced and convicted that as soon as practicable, and I know for a fact that when the vice president says they are working on it, mm -hmm. seriously working on it, he's really working on it. Is he really? He, he is. Three months ago, no, he, he said the same thing. No, he said something about the allowances for nurses and uh, teachers training when he went to the north, and a young lady asked uh -huh. him that question. Yes, but Volta region, he was no, there. I'm saying we that have right, right that after that the question, a few, few days later, uh -huh. the, so you see, there's a, there, there's a budget, okay? And then there are, there are revenue targets. And just so we all know, and Honorable will bear me witness, that when budget goes to parliament, it's not as though the money is there. It's money that we are hoping to realize. Mm -hmm. And there are locations, appropriations being made for those commitments to be made. Okay, so sometimes, sometimes, uh, the finance ministry would have to adjust certain things here and there. And so I am extremely optimistic that once the vice president has said he will follow up, uh, pretty soon the money will come. What's the guarantee? That's next three months. And we'll I, 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 I and gave you a guarantee. You still say I gave you a guarantee where you Because you the finance to... ministry, I mean, the number like, of You're asking for a guarantee, and I'm telling you the guarantee, and hold you don't on. want to accept the guarantee. Hold the, on. The, the young people, the young men and women out there who need their money need that guarantee. Yeah. So let me tell them, let me assure they them. They feel you money. have abandoned them. No. Now they wrote to the finance we ministry, and the finance ministry no, also told them it. that they have to now go back to the presidency because that is where the initiative started. Mm -hmm. And so they should go back there and rather get them to be the ones to now come back to the ministry no, I understand. and tell them. I understand I mean, how they feel. It's as if we're playing hide and seek No, we are people. not. I understand how they feel. And it's painful. I have been there before. And sometimes I'm still there. Especially yeah, yeah, when you don't have money. Uh, oh, you, are you where, where were you? <laughs> you are you an no opponent? Yes. But, let, so let me bring I, it up I, I, I'm sorry <laughs> for what they are going through, but I can assure them to the extent that even 15,000 uh, health professionals have been recruited. The money will come. Please. Do you even have the money? We, it will come. From where? It will come. From where? Trust the MPP government to make you the money available. You haven't paid the FAMD people. I'm, I'm saying you trust paid the MPP government. Even FAMD. So something Nadu similar Dako happened Dufado. to them back in 2022. And Dr. Baumia, that the money will come. When they worked for seven Bella, months, the money will they come. didn't get their way. The money will come. That's what the people want to hear. The money will come. <clears throat> Bella, I, I think that uh, the vice president and the flag bearer of the MPP would do himself a wealth of good to stay away from giving assurances that he knows he cannot meet. As you said, this is not the first time. And it is not the first group. Why is it that we create programs, we implement policies that we know are not sustainable? And you see, I reject this argument of there is no money. It's about priority. Yeah. Mm. Because we had sufficient money to sink into the biggest hole in the world. Mm. Over 300 million Ghana cities in the name of a national cathedral. Yeah. We had sufficient money to give away close to 12 million to a contractor who has done nothing at the Kuala Dam. In fact, there was sufficient money to the extent that a minister had over a million dollars in her room under her bed. Was it a government money? 
So how do we know it's not government money? Do we print no, dollars? Do you don't know why do, do, we, do so? we print dollars no, in Ghana? If you don't know why do you say Do so? we print dollars in no, Ghana? If you don't know where did she get them from? Him. Allow him to make. And I'm point. even surprised that the Financial Intelligence Unit and the U.S. Embassy have not raised issues. Bella, if you had five hundred thousand dollars in your room, I bet you would be sitting here. I would not be sitting yeah, here. Praise God. And she's walking away <laughs> freely. So, so we shouldn't open that that kind of worms. So what but I'm saying is that government has a responsibility to meet its obligations to these young men and women. This excuse that there is no money is not tolerable because they find money to do the things that they want to do. When it comes to what Ghanaians want them to do, that is where they complain that there is no money. So pay NAPCO training their allowances, pay the youth in our frustration their allowances, pay the farmer D guys mm -hmm. and girls their allowances. If you can find the money to pay for a CEO and a staff, for a cater pot, which we have not seen any work done in almost eight, eight years, you can find the money to pay them. So I reject that argument that there is no money. Mm. They should pay them. Barring that, they should suffer the political consequences because you can't get away with this type of behavior. But they are fully also aware of what you did when Hold you on. were in power. What we did? There was no NAPCO under the end. No, no, I'm talking about the fact that allowances have not been paid. To the extent that you even cancelled, you didn't even... And Kofi, we didn't Kofi, cancel. Kofi, you we promised, gave them you the promised, option. No. Hold on, Kofi. You promised to do better. Kofi, Ali Hamid, we have to go. But you promised to do better. Kofi, you promised to do better. Kofi, you promised to do better. Which is why Ghanaians no, voted you in. And I'm saying that, Bella, I would have kept my promise. Now, when you talk about jobs that you have created, you say 2.3 million, sometimes even 2.1 million, depending on which day it is. You list NAPCO as one of those jobs. But, ah, but you heard from but the, the vice president. The vice president gave a different figure. Listen, at the launch of the your launch manifesto, of the manifesto, he said 2.3 million. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. at the press briefing, he said you, let's say, no, no, no. 2.1 million. It's the truth, Kofi. No, I was there. You were there. You heard that. Point, so on. hold on. <laughs> now, when you are listing your jobs, hey. you list NAPCO Bravo, as one of the jobs that you have created. Yes. <laughs> yes, because, but the people but, but, that you say you have created 30, jobs for. 34,000 of these people Even are that employed. you need to verify. Because I remember when this figure came out, some of them said that they went to find their own jobs. And yet, you people counted them they as part of the Yes, jobs. in Ghana. Yes, they found their own jobs. But they found. And jobs. there are still about sixty thousand of them who are home. Too, they never at the had moment, who don't have jobs. Experience. So why do you still say you have two point three million jobs created when about sixty thousand of the people? Bella, you have a problem people... with, the, with, with, with creating I'm just checking. For, I'm just checking. Bella, I'm just checking the numbers. This is Nanaya, what, please tell me so we can. This go. is what they don't want to hear. But Napco. But Bella, isn't Napco? Oh, Kofi, please. Napco was. We have to go. A mirage of job creation. NAPCO was a mirage of job creation, and that is the reality of it. Now, what the farm D guys, young men and women are fighting for, mm. is even not so much about the money, but about the fact that they do not have their financial clearance, which would, which would be an evidence of a contract between themselves and government, the government. Mm. to prove that indeed they are working and that they deserve some allowance. It is not just about the money. Mm. And then the vice president, who is the chairman of the economic management team, that is the main engine behind the Ministry of Finance, comes to tell us that he is not aware about government owing 11.5 million Ghana cities. Bella, if government, someone is owing government 11.5 million Ghana cities, mm. would government not be aware? Hmm. So if you are owing someone 11.5 million Ghana cities, you come to tell me as a chairman of the economic management team that you have no idea what is happening. And then the minister for finance then comes to say that whatever negotiations there is, is between you and the office of the president so mm. you should go there then it also comes back to the fact that is the vice president not operating from the presidency we have to go you see bella at, at go, what is happening and those handling the handling allergy ought to do it right at the we have to go post of the media just uh -huh. just 30 seconds there was a question about seconds, the, the eight people who lost their lives in tetuman 
and well, as the chairman of the police council, worry. you tell we, we us cannot discuss that, that you have no idea about the level all where right. the, the investigation is. No, no, we have to go. But, but, uh, but well, thank well, you all so happen? much for, for um, oh, joining us oh, on know. the show. And of course, um, I've been speaking to Nanai Sapon. He's a political aide to Alan Chairman Team Movement for Change. Uh, Frederick Kofi Ameyao. He's a member of Why the communications you team. I should his mouth. I'm just asking. Bravo. So, <laughs> when you say Fred, you know your mouth is Fred. So, Frederick Kofiamaya is a member of the so mysterious. team. <laughs> and <laughs> Honorable Dr. Clement Abbas Apak. Uh, he's also the MP for Busa South Constituency. You didn't ask me why I'm smiling when I was mentioning his I name. So. I smiled when <laughs> I, I mentioned the name. Thank you all so much for joining us on the show. Today, Roland will be coming to you with Community Manifesto from CECO. But quickly, step into the world of Dewa 539 for your chance to win big with Dewa Direct and Dewa Chop Money. With Dewa Direct, dial star 446 hash. Pick 1 to 39 and win 20 times, 40 times, or 400 times your stake. And win cash every evening at 7 p.m. and on Sundays at 6 p.m. Early birds love Dewa Chop Money. At 10 a.m., dial star 446 hash. Choose 1 to 39 and win 20 times, 40 times, or 400 times your stake. Play at dewa nlacom or dial star 446 hash. If you need help, call these numbers 055 6259 or 053 2479. 879. Dewa Afa. Remember to play cash out as well. Star 439 hash. Select option two. Three people will get a thousand Ghana CDs uh, to share by the end of the show. We'll be back with more. Thank you again. Well, let me wish. Prophecy time. Abraham and Sarah, Mubanya twins. Go and buy jacket. You are going to Canada. Hallelujah. The best